Hi, Renee Flamand here. When you find yourself in the kitchen crying on a Saturday night singing Gladys Night at the top of your lungs after a week of breaking no contact, it leads a girl to a research rabbit hole. I found a nugget of wisdom. I've learned something about myself. It turns out I think I might be addicted to the pain associated to singing Gladys Night at the top of your lungs in your kitchen. It's so empowering getting this information. I had to share it with you. I'm just going to read it because I don't want to get one word wrong. It's succinct. I've been reading it for five hours. And I think I'm allowed if I say his name and where I found it right on YouTube. Am I allowed? His name is Robert Torbay. I found it on Quora. I read a lot of what he says. My hands are cold. I'm sitting very close to outside. So Robert Torbay says, honestly, I think I'm addicted to singing Gladys Knight in my kitchen. No, addicted. 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 Mm. Mm -hmm. This is fascinating, and it will, I will handle breaking no contact differently going forward because of this. Why do people stay with narcissists? Addiction to painkillers. People who stay with narcissists are addicted to being lovesick. They are addicted to yearning, hurting, being wistful, hoping, praying, pining. They're addicted to hurting. When we hurt, the body produces natural painkillers. The agony of your heart slowly breaking releases a steady stream of such endorphins. You are short-circuiting your brain in order to get high. You are willfully participating in your own destruction, mutilating yourself for the chemical rush the body produces. Burning the furniture is no way to stay warm. Robert. Painkillers, endorphins, get high, chemical rush. Four things. It's chemistry. We talked about that before. But the succinct, poignant nature, which is what I told him, I wrote to him, of this explanation stopped me in my tracks. So am I addicted to singing Gladys Knight in the kitchen? Are you addicted to singing whatever you do or writing or crying? Think about this is fascinating. So I told you last video that I would continue on the no contact week because I learned so much. So did I break no contact knowing I needed a rush of those endorphin chemical rush? Did I need that? Did I need that? And so I, you know where it's going to go if you break no contact. Oh, come on. You know there's only trouble that's going to ensue. So it's not like I broke no contact and said, I'll give you 10 minutes to explain what get off what's on your chest. I didn't do that thinking it was going to be Cinderella. You know it's going to end in disaster. Even if you remain and 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 it's going to end in you singing Gladys Knight in your kitchen crying. It just is. It can't possibly not. And I I know myself. Please, we didn't even get into empath and codependent. Ooh. Both and dysfunctionally high on both. So there I am. And I, I read this and I thought, that's exactly what I did. You're willfully participating, breaking no contact, in your own destruction, which you know is going to happen if you break no contact, mutilating, mutilating yourself for the chemical rush. So they're the pain. They're the hurt. And we're, we go get it. And then they cause this. So we're addicted to this too, the painkiller that you need, that your body produces to help you deal with what the pain did to you, them. <gasps> so we're addicted to both. Oh, see how powerful it can be? You got to think that through next time, right? So next time it comes up that, and I broke, I think, because I was just like, oh, maybe if I allow him to talk for 10, you know, maybe he'll stop. Whatever the reason, if you ever break no contact or whatever, just be prepared for the waterfall of emotion attached to it. Attached to it. So even if, say, you can't break no contact, watch for that rush if they give that to you. And maybe we can head it off or something. Maybe we can say we know it's coming, right? Isn't that what you do? And then you can... You can uh, head it off at the pass or something? I don't know, but I think that I'm addicted to singing Gladys Knight in the kitchen, crying.
It's unbelievable to think about that if you didn't break no contact, you wouldn't get that pain. You know if you break no contact, you're going to get that pain. I broke no contact knowing I'd sing Gladys Knight in the kitchen. That's exactly what this man, Robert Torbay, is saying. So it's something to think about. Addiction to the painkillers and the pain, you know, the narcissist is his own addiction. But are you addicted to that painkiller after? That is something to look at throughout your, all of our lives. How you were raised, how you deal with friends, how you deal with family, how you deal with a lot of things. So when I heard that, all I could think of is I want to share it with everybody because it helped me, I think, realize that I do need to keep myself in check. Because that if that's the case, I'm going to break that. I'm not walking around life addicted to painkillers. When I don't take painkillers, I can. So, no, I'm not going to have it be some metaphorical painkiller. I don't like how they make my brain feel. I took a quarter of a Valium when I was 19. When I took my wisdom teeth out, I slept for 36 hours. They're not for me. Back then, it was Valium they gave you. They said four a day. My mother gave me a tiny piece. 19 hours or some ridiculous thing. And I get all these weird industrial dreams. Nope. I don't do painkillers. C-section, no painkillers. I can't. Yet, I'm addicted to them. That's, I think, why this floored me. See, you, know, you don't know the background. It floored me. I'm addicted to these metamorphic metamor metamor <laughs> painkillers, but I won't take them in real life. Heavy. Heavy.